Hey Parasites, welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and this is our final episode in the Osborne Symbiote Christmas Extravaganza that we're doing where we're talking about the Osborne family and their current symbiotes in the comic books of Red Goblin and Misery. So in the last episode we talked about the ending of Misery, and in this episode we're going to talk about the ending of Red Goblin, which is issues 9 and 10. And once again we have Alex Pechnadal coming back to write, but then we also have Chris Campana who did the artwork in issue 8 coming back to finish off the book. Still doing a great job. I think these books have great artwork in them, and I like the writing. Uh, you know, I think Alex is a good writer, definitely, on this book. And I think Sabir was really great over on Misery and uh, and did really good stuff with Liz, especially. And we talked about that in that episode if you want to go watch it, and we broke that down a little bit more over there. But in this one, we're going to talk about the ending, which is basically just Red Goblin versus Gold Goblin. So you get to see Normie versus his grandfather. Uh, you know, So Normie's the villain because at the end of the last story, Normie went kind of crazy. The symbiote took over, captured Normie or, you know, bonded with them and is now out there just dragging Normie around. So he's missing. Right. And so his parents, his family are looking for him. You know, his obviously his mother, Liz Allen, is looking for him. She's still on the island. She's getting off. You know, she just finished wrapping that up with Carlton Drake. So she's like, look, it's going to be a while before I get back to New York. You got to do something. You got to go find your grandson, you know, and he's like, all right, no problem. So he suits up as the gold goblin and he goes out looking for Normie, who at the beginning of this book uh, attacks a house that has a kid in it that went to his school. And I guess that kid kind of bullied, you know, Normie a little bit. And so Normie, as Carnage, has gone there, or as Red Goblin, has gone there to get his revenge on this kid. Um, and so he's like, yeah, ready to kill. Because he killed Philip Yurick in the last issue, and now the Carnage symbiote is fully taken over. It remembers the taste of blood and everything, even though it basically ate a corpse, because Phil Yurick was barely alive and human again. Uh, but it now has that taste for killing, and so Normie has lost control of the symbiote. So these two issues are basically about the people who love Normie trying to come and save him, starting with Norman Osborn here, which at first I was kind of like, ah, this book, it, it has a slow start, and it has some cool flashbacks and stuff, but it kind of has a slow start, and I, I wasn't really digging it until it gets to this scene here, where Normie digs up the body of Harry Osborn, and I don't know, I, I guess that's the original or the clone. I, I'm going to guess it's the original one because of how decayed it is. But he digs up the body and then Norman shows up. And dude, the dialogue here, Alex killed it. Norman shows up and just is full on xenophobic, which feels like a very Norman Osborn thing. He shows up and just starts talking mad shit to this symbiote. He's like, you disgusting alien. You know, I remember being bonded to you and it was the grossest feeling in the world. Your your race is just parasites. You're awful. You're worthless. You contribute nothing. Like he's just cutting this thing down, pissing it off more and more and more. And uh, and of course, that leads them into a big fight. And, if, you know, I have Norman here trying to use his tech, trying to separate the symbiote from Normie, but it doesn't really go his way. And Norman gets the living crap kicked out of him. He does see you know harry's body and he's like you know looking he's like why are you doing this you're desecrating my son's grave my son died a hero which is more than we'll say about you when we kill you and separate you from my my grandson so he's just cutting into this symbiote you know with uh, with harsh words for sure spit and fire um but it's not enough uh, and speaking of spit and fire you know red goblin is ready to do that too and kill norman but he ends up you know hurting it and getting it away but unfortunately, it does get the upper hand and it beats the crap out of Norman. Uh, but it doesn't kill him. It takes his goblin glider and says, you know, let's go find the person who can cleanse us. Because in a moment of clarity, you know, we have Normie going, OK, I know who can cleanse me. The same person who cleansed me the first time, Dylan Brock. And so that's where we are. The f end of this issue is Normie going to find Dylan and Dylan sensing that his friend is coming to him. Um, and he's and he can sense the distress in the symbiote. So yeah, it's it's awesome. And this book doesn't waste any time. The last one opens slow. This one doesn't. They start fighting at the end of the first page. They get into a big old tussle. And this book is and the last one was Red Goblin versus Gold Goblin. Red Goblin versus Venom. The entire time. Normie versus Dylan. Best friends fighting. It's this issue was kind of cool. At least from the fighting standpoint. I felt like some of the writing is where it kind of lost me. And that's where my criticisms are. And what I was talking about about wrapping this up. I would have liked to seen another issue or two. But really, I understand the reality of it. If the book isn't selling, which I don't think this book was selling, unfortunately. Um, it, it got off to a really good start. I really liked the first like six issues especially. And then in 7 and 8, there was cool moments. And in 9 and 10, there's cool moments. 
But overall, it's like that last arc, you know, where they're trying to wrap up the Onder story and Crossbones and Miles and get that little appearance in there and then Gold Goblin and Venom. It just felt like each issue felt like, all right, this is the Crossbones issue. This is the Miles issue. This is the Gold Goblin issue. This is the Venom issue. And that's kind of how the book feels, you know, how it was wrapped up. And I don't know, it's it didn't feel... It, I guess Alex made it feel as organic as he could. But to play devil's advocate with myself, you know, and to kind of go back a little bit, I would say that this, even though it felt a little piecemealed, I still feel like Alex and the editors and everyone who worked on this did their best to kind of make these last four issues feel like they one goes into the next one, you know, because that's how the first six felt. And even though it was like, all right, this is cameos, just the last four issues are just going to be cameo city um, I still feel like they did their best to tie a story thread there, even if I felt disconnected from it at times and felt like some things weren't done well, um, like some of the dialogue and some of the, the heartfelt moments that you want to see from these characters or connect to on the, on some level, you don't get fully. You know, it's not like the the stuff with Liz in you know Sabir's book with Misery, where they really deep dive into Liz on some of those flashback scenes, and I felt really you know as a fan longtime fan i felt like okay this is great this is really you know paying service to this character and doing a good job and normie here it's like he has a moment here or there but not like the ones i feel like on the level of liz and her book but to balance that i didn't like the symbiote stuff so much in liz's book but in this book i do like the symbiote stuff so i think i would probably prefer something like this overall in the end because you have something that's pretty good human character stuff but the symbiote stuff is fun and interesting. And and they're talking mad crap to each other, you know, between Gold Goblin versus uh, Red Goblin and then now Venom versus Red Goblin. But Venom is constantly trying to talk to, you know, Normie, trying to save him, trying to get through to him and get past the symbiote. And eventually he does because they get into this fight and Venom actually is, you know, he refuses to fight back. And so he starts losing. But then something goes wrong and a bridge falls apart and it's pretty neat because, you know, bridges and Osborns, there's like a history there. And so people are about to die, but Normie takes back control of the suit and goes and helps these people and uh, and then ends up getting helped by Dylan in the end. Hey, look, it's a carnage and you're an Osborn. You both have these dark pasts and family connections, these ties. Like if you look at Rascal as you know, kind of a son of carnage and you're the son of the Green Goblin, like, yeah, of course, it's there's going to be some volatility in your bonding, uh, you know, between the host and, and symbiote. But, you know, that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You know, um, you just have to find a way to accept that you both have these pasts and work your way to a better future. And I thought overall, I was like, wow, I didn't think they were going to try to whip up a message in this big slugfest in these final two issues. But they kind of did a little bit. And so that's kind of where you have normie moving from here and so at the end you know christmas you know happy ending christmas ending you have all the osborns you got norman uh, liz and stanley and obviously normie all back together at home and uh, and you know stanley runs up and hugs his brother and liz is kind of like in, she's like curious like all right i'm sensing something about him you know what's going on and and she can tell that maybe there's more to him than meets the eye and he's too in his own world to notice that maybe the same thing about liz so this kind of wraps up that story. Obviously, Liz still is misery and has that suit or access to that suit. Now there's going to be a chimpanzee anti-venom thing that's going to be running around. You got Red Goblin out there who's going to be running around. You got Dylan who's going to go back into the Venom book and deal with Toxin. And we'll talk about those in the uh, episodes coming up for sure. So we'll get back into the Dylan stuff uh, and then talk about the Black Widow stuff. And then also wrap up Venom number 25. And I want to get done with all that and then from... Here on out, we're only going to follow the Venom comics in trade paperback. Same with Carnage. So anytime a trade comes out, I'll pick it up and we'll cover all the, you know, the whole arc of that story at that time. So thank you so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.